Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we have another playthrough for you. This time it is a fully cooperative game called Back to the Future Dice Through Time. Yeah, so this is one of two different Back to the Future IP games that are out right now. Mm -hmm. This one is published by Ravensburger Games. It plays two to four players. Fully cooperative, like Monique said, so we're going to go ahead and play it. In this game, uh, if you're familiar with the IP of Back to the Future, Biff has stolen the DeLorean and he has mismanaged and mangled a bunch of different <laughs> items and put them in different locations at different places. So ultimately, this game is a pick up and deliver game where we're going to be traveling through time to different locations, solving events that occur reminiscent of the movie, mm -hmm. and then uh, getting items and then returning those items to their proper location and time. But before we get started, we'd like to kindly please ask that you turn on your Klingon subtitles just in case we make any of those mistakes. And if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to go back in time. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we have our, uh, this is like a time paradox, looks like, right? Yep, that's exactly it. So this is set in the trilogy and there are five different locations. The way that you read this board is each column is a specific location in Hill Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have here the high school, Lou's Cafe, Clock Tower, the Brown Mansion, and um, the Peabody Farm. And each row is a different point in time. So mm -hmm. they're color coordinated. So the brown uh, top row is 1885, and then we have 1955 for blue, 1985. Which is technically the current year. 1985 is the current year. The orange yes. area. And then the, the pinkish area at the very bottom is 2015, which is the future mm -hmm. for this series. So like Naveen was mentioning, on the very left-hand side here are the different item decks that correspond to the years that are lost in time. Mm -hmm. And the number of items per row is dependent on the mode of game that you're playing. So we are playing the standard game, which is three items each. Uh, and the object of the game is to return all these items to their proper destination, which yep. we are going to be doing with our own DeLoreans. So the gameplay is actually pretty simple. If we were able to drop off all the items, we win automatically. If our out of time marker ever gets to 12, we lose. Yep. That's it. So we conditions. just keep on playing rounds and rounds until one of those conditions are met. Hopefully we win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we start each round by drawing a number of event cards from the event deck, depending on the number of players. So in a two player game, we draw three. There are two main types of cards that you'll find in the event deck. Mm -hmm. There are location events, which are moments from one of the movies. Yep where you would need to put the actual card where it took place. So in this example, this says Doc Saves Marty. It goes in Clock Tower 1885, because that's yep. when it happened. And then there are also special events, and these are basically like either one-offs or things that happen during the round. So in this example, this is struck by lightning. It says each player moves to the next gear down, keeping the same relative location. So you just follow what it says yep. on the card. So we start the round by drawing three of these and resolving them. And then afterwards, all players roll their dice. So each player has four dice of their player color, yep. and each die has different symbols on them, which are going to be the different actions that you can take on your turn. So once we roll our dice, then we start performing actions. And basically you can spend each of these dice to do a certain thing. So this symbol right here- The flux capacitor. Is the flux, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this allows us to move our DeLorean to the same location in any year. So this is a vertical movement. That's how you move through time. Yeah, that's how you, you move through time, but you must stay in the same location. The opposite is the arrow, and this allows us to move to any location in our current year. So I can go horizontal movement anywhere, any number of spaces. Lightning bolts let you re-roll any unspent dice of mm -hmm. your choice. And these fists are basically punches. And so we haven't discussed Biff yet. There are four different Biffs on the board and their Biff is going to kind of move around as well, uh, moving on to these location events, kind of preventing us from Completing resolving events, yeah. Yeah, the events mm -hmm. while he's on it. So spending a punch allows you to move Biff from the location that you're on. So if I were on this location, I could spend a punch to move him anywhere else in this same year. Right. Now, in order for us to actually get these item cards, we have to complete the, the location events. Yep. And if you notice, the location events have symbols in the top left corner. These are the symbols that we need to spend via our dice in order to resolve these events. So if I were here, I could spend a wrench, which by the way, also counts as a wild for just any one symbol on a location event. Right. I could spend this to resolve this card. This would go away. Any paradox tokens would also go away. And I would be able to take one of the item cards from the deck to now move around and return in order to further the game. And the last symbol is this uh, 
Doc, Doc Brown, yeah. And he allows us to basically remove these Paradox tokens, two of them from anywhere on the board. Because Paradox tokens are one of the ways that, that our out of time marker is going to move forward at the end of the round. Now you can also spend any die, no matter what the die face is, to move one space uh, adjacent to where your DeLorean yeah. is. In the same time. In the same, yeah, exactly, in the same year. And you can also spend any two of the exact same, same symbol to activate Mr. Fusion. And that's basically taking a wild of any other symbol. Right. And that is all the different actions. The last thing is... On your turn, you can ripple dice, and that's kind of like a unique concept to this game. So basically, any unspent dice that I have, I can leave on the location that I'm that I'm at. Mm -hmm. And so in future rounds, anyone who is on the same location or the same location in a future year, so basically anywhere from this blue space downwards, can use this die yeah. to either spend it to take the, the action or to use it for a location event. And you can do any number of these on your turn, as long as it's an, it's an unspent die. Mm -hmm. The one thing is if any two DeLoreans meet in the same location, then our out of time marker moves up two spaces. And the other way that the out of time marker um, advances is at the end of the round, you're going to look at which year has the most number of these event location cards. event cards yep. out. And whichever one has the most, our out of time marker is gonna move up the number of spaces equal to those locations with cards. Right. It also moves an additional space if there's a Paradox token. And then at the very, very end of the round, we place Paradox tokens on any of those locations that cost us time. And that is how the round ends. And that's pretty much the entire game, actually. Yeah, that's because, the gist of it. Yeah, yeah like I said, we, we pretty much play the entire game until either we won or we lost. Right. So we are going to reset okay, and we're going that. to demonstrate how this game goes. Okay, we are going to see who goes first. Right, yeah. Ready? Yeah, shall we? All right, okay, so it's so a co-op, so it doesn't really matter. But it doesn't really matter. Monique we had to choose a first player. The first player. So this is the first player marker. Yeah, it goes to eighty-eight. Yeah, so that's right. eighty-eight. All right, so we're gonna get started. Let's draw some All event right, cards. Let's do it. First one. Marty and the Pinheads audition for the dance. Uh, okay, so this is uh, from the first movie, where he gets denied. So it says Hill Valley High School, nineteen eighty-five. Yep, so that's so where that's that goes. Hang out here. Then we have Old Man Peabody is visited by a spaceman. Nice. So this go to P goes to Peabody Farm, 1955. <laughs> yep. And the last one is Marty and Jennifer take a walk. Okay. So this is a clock tower in 1985. It's the opening scene of the movie. Very All nice. Right. So typically, if there is a symbol at the top right hand corner, Biff would automatically move to that card, but none of these show that. Cool. So now we roll our dice. All right, so I got a little dice tray here. I'm gonna roll on my mat. All right. Okay. So unspent dice will go off the mat, and then spent dice will go on the mat. Sure, I can do that. And now we perform our action. So it looks like I have a reroll. I have a flux, two rerolls actually, and a punch. So where am I? I'm quite far. I am going to spend, oh, too bad I'm going first, or else it would have been nice to just go there and spend one of my rerolls. Yeah, so with mine, I have the arrow needed to handle this right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this right there for you. Okay. And that way you can- uh, Potentially use it. Yeah, I'm rippling this die so that Naveen can use it to resolve that card immediately. And then I have a flux. Do I wanna move to a different, I could go straight here. Well, I, I have that ability to do that. Do you wanna just move towards that over there? Oh, you can, you can do I can both do of these, I can huh? do both of them, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna move closer here. Should I just re-roll these? Yeah, just re-roll them. So okay, can... I'm spending this to re-roll these two because I haven't spent them. Just to see if I can... Punch and dock. Punch and dock. Okay. So... I'm just going to spend them to move two spaces over. So dock is what you need over there, huh? Is yeah. Too bad. Yeah. It's too bad. So I'm okay. just going to spend them both to move adjacent twice. Yeah, you can spend one die just to move one one spot in, in your location. So that's that. Okay, my turn? Yep. Okay, it's so turn. this is demonstrating that ripple that Monique was talking about. So... Monique has left this for me back in 1955, and now me in the current year, 1985, have basically found this dice and I'm <laughs> using it here. So you can only do that for the same location into the future or at the same time, not in the past. Just like in the movie, when Doc leaves the DeLorean for Marty. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this die right here, and the thing needed to 
satisfy this event is using it. So here you go, Monique. We satisfied the event. That goes yeah, out. so he means the symbol was a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt, yeah. It's really tiny. Sorry, guys. Okay, so, so that goes out. I'll just put it over. And now here. Naveen has access to an item. So okay. you just draw the topmost in that location. Topmost. Okay, a smart jacket. Okay, so this is uh, Marty's life preserver. And uh, in order to resolve this item, it needs to get to Cafe 80s over here. So I'm going to try to get that there uh, in the future. All right, so now, uh, so I haven't spent any dice yet. Just spent so mine. Just spent your dice. So, so now you want to try to get this, right? Yeah, so just like Monique did, any one die can move. So I'm going to go Doc Brown to move one. Okay. And then I will use uh, the tool to move two. And then this event requires the arrow to solve it. So I have that right here. So that's gonna solve this one. So now this goes out of the game, and again I draw another card here. Yes. And the most the most items you can have at any given time is two. So I'm I'm capped here. After this, I need to go drop these things off. Yeah. So the item I have is okay. This one goes to 1885, and it's the model time machine. To the I have blacksmith. To go back to the blacksmith. So, all right. So that's gonna go right over there, and now I know where I need to eventually go. So I have this one die right here. So because one of my um, one of my items needs to go to 2015. I'm actually gonna use the flux capacitor to get me into 2015 so it can set me up for the future over here. Sounds good. Cool, all right. All right, that's, that's it, that, that was the round. Yeah. So now we are going to look at which year has the most um, location events. And there's only one, which is 1955. And so we are going to advance the auto time marker, the number of spaces as locations, which mm -hmm. is just one. And now this event is, or this location I should say, is going to get a paradox. Uh, and so if we don't remove this before the end of the next round, it's going to advance an additional space right. because of the Paradox time right. marker. Uh, all right, okay. so now we pass the first player marker. Cool, that's me. to Naveen, and we begin anew. So draw okay. three events. Three, piece. okay, so we have, oh, Doc falls in love with Clara. So this is from uh, the third movie. That's going to go to the schoolhouse over here. And there's a Biff icon here. So Biff from 1885 is going to hang out over there. Causing problems. All right. The next one is Doc introduces the DeLorean time machine to Marty. So this is going to be in 18, uh, sorry, 1985 at Twin Pines Mall. All right. Also known as Puente Hills Mall here in California. Which is really it's, close by. That's where they filmed to it. To where yeah. we are right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we have this one right here, the last one. And Marty skateboards to school. So uh, he starts at his house. And All right. Skateboards oh, away. Yep. And Biff he, is there, unfortunately. Yeah, Biff is there. All right. So, so let's roll our dice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So I've got some punching arrows, wrench, two punches. All right. So, oh, I don't have the... Uh, you don't have what you need? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have the ability to... You have two... No, you have two... Uh... Punches. Oh yeah, I have two punches. Yeah. I could spend this as a weld. Okay, okay sorry, so it's your turn first anyway. Turn. Okay, so I'm gonna spend this, and you know what guys, just for housekeeping, I'm gonna keep this off the mat. Anything I spend, I'll put it onto the mat. That way uh, I don't make mistakes here. So I need to move one space over. So let's probably move, I'm probably gonna move with Doc over here. Okay. So I'm moving into a spot. So now I'm I'm at the location where the jacket can be returned, but Biff is kind of blocking me so here, punch so I gotta punch him. I don't have any punches, but as Monique explained earlier, any two of the same symbol can represent any other symbol, so I'm gonna spend these two to represent a punch. Mr. Fusion. Mr. Fusion right here, uh, which is gonna punch Biff, and I get to choose where exactly he goes. So I'm just gonna move him, I'll just move him over here, all the way in the corner. Okay. Don't know why. And then, uh, so now, because I'm here, it doesn't take an action to return an item, so I'm gonna return this item right over here. So now we, we move the out-of-time marker, move one space to the left. So one That's one item done. down. And we, we get an Einstein token, yeah. which is nice. a punch that we can so use. So these are all just a bunch of random other symbols on yeah. these, so we just grabbed one. All right, so I still have one more move. So because I have to get to 1885 to drop this off, yeah. and I do have a flux capacitor, I might just zoom my way over here and then try to handle this Biff activity over there. What do you think? Sure. Okay, so let's do it. So I am going to spend my die there and then travel through time. Now I'm in 1885. All right. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my two punches to activate Mr. Fusion and use it as a flux. So it's gonna move through time. I'm gonna end in Twin Pines Mall 
And then I'm going to spend the wrench, because you can use a wrench as any one icon on an event, to uh, resolve this, this one. card. Yeah, cool. So now I get an item from 1985. It's the last item, huh? It's the last one? Yeah. The other two were from 1985? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so we have the Sports Almanac. Nice. Uh, to return it to Blast from the Past in 2015, which right is here. here. Yeah. So that's kind of bad that we depleted all in one location, because now whenever we... Uh, resolve the event cards here. There's no real benefit Nothing's besides reducing the number of cards we have there. It is what it is, though. But it is what it is, exactly. Yeah. Alright. So I do have one more. You might as well position yourself here so that in the next turn you can just slip down there. That's true. Okay, I will spend this one last die to move over a space. Yeah, pretty good. And that's it. Now we're going to advance the out-of-time marker. Mm -hmm. It's a three-way tie oh, yeah, for a yeah, number yeah. of locations. Uh -huh. And you break the tie by going with the earliest Location. That's right, that's right, okay. So it's just this. So this is going to move up one space, and we are going to get a Paradox <laughs> token right there. So that kind of... That's not bad. It's not bad. We're, I mean, it is we have it is. one one time. Not bad. Okay, so now we pass the, the first player card. marker. Yeah, you get the first player. I'm going to draw, draw the three. Okay. okay, here you go. Oh, we have... What are a... you looking at? Add a Paradox token to each of Biff's locations with an event that does not already have a Paradox token. So it's this one right here. So there's so no event here. One. Uh, there's no event here. Biff already has one with the Paradox. All right, so that's a little bit of a problem. All right, so second event. The train pushes the DeLorean to 88 miles per hour. So this is a train bridge it's in 1885. Yep. And so I'm there is a Biff, there is a Biff icon there, so he moves. Okay. And the last card is Struck by Lightning. Each player Ooh. moves to the next year down, keeping oh. the same relative location. Yikes. So. Well, that's good for you. You're going to deliver. for me. I'm going to deliver But that gets me out of here, which is where I needed to be. Yeah, I think you're now there. Uh-oh. Okay, so that's that's done as well. That's that, yeah. And now we roll. All right, let's do it. Let's go! Okay, very All good. Right. You know, I'm actually going to move my dice here, and when I spend them, I'm going to move them up. Okay, yeah. To this colored area. It probably makes things easier. So, because I'm starting my turn here on Blast from the Past, and that's where my item card needs to go, it automatically gets delivered. There's nice. no biff. Oops, <laughs> there's no, no bit no and there's no event. Perfect. So this gets delivered, our out of time marker moves over. Nice. And we gain an Einstein. Oh, no, which is a dock. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so now I need to do something. Where are you going to go? You know, I don't know. I got boosted, so I have a flux capacitor, though, so I can get back and then deliver. So now at the end of the round, this, no, this is going to... Yeah, so, okay, so let me let me talk you through my move. I do have a flux capacitor. It's going to get me here. I'm going to use one of my arrows to get to the blacksmith, drop this thing off, uh -huh. use the dock brown to go here, and then use my other arrow to solve this. Oh, so you are going to solve that. Yeah, so I will solve that. That's my whole thing. Oh, okay, great. We need more items. So I can either work on this. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to work on this. Okay. So I'm actually going to spend uh, these two wrenches as a Mr. Fusion and use them to move through time. Nice. And then I'm gonna spend this punch just to move adjacent one space, and now I have a dock for that symbol. Nice. So this gets discarded because I've completed this event, the Paradox token goes out. Very good. And I get to draw an item card from 1955. It's a fax that says you're fired. <laughs> yeah. I have to return it to Hilldale in 2015, which is right Over there. Here. So it's quite far from me, but it's all my dice. Your turn. You know, that's from Marty Gets Fired in the Future. Oh, is that right? Yeah, in the second movie. That's sad <laughs> for him. He gets terminated. Oh, yeah. Via fax. <laughs> yeah, via fax, yeah. That was a, that's How what they thought the, the main technology. There was a fax machine in every single like house, in every single room in oh. the house. That's like what I think the future was. I clearly like. haven't seen all three of these movies. I've definitely seen the first one, but Naveen is the, the, buff. the fan yes. of the trilogy. So. All right, so I have my dice here, so I will explain everything. I'm going to move through time with my flux capacitor. So we go up. That's too bad that we got booted out with that lightning strike. Yeah. I'm going to use True. one of my arrows to get me over to the blacksmith location. Because, again, those arrows allow me to go as far as I want. And I can deliver this model time machine. Yay! So that's another... Uh, Event. This doesn't move over because it's already at zero, but Sorry. we get an Einstein. Item, not event. And then, so now, I have the arrow that is required over here. So I'm going to spend the Doc Brown symbol to move myself over. And then I will spend my last arrow to resolve that event. Yes. 
so that okay. goes out. So this goes out, and so then you because get of that, I get that. This item. Okay, this is the makeshift skateboard. So I need to return it to the clock tower in 1955. Right there. Right over there. All okay. right. Cool. So that's it. That's it. So we're going to uh, the location that has the most. They both are tied. This is the earlier one. So we move the out of time marker up by one and it gets a paradox. paradox. Okay. All right. So we I'm the new first player. rotate this. Yep. And now you can start by drawing three events. Okay. The first one is, oh, Doc introduces the DeLorean uh, time machine to Marty. That's over here. And it does have a Biff symbol. So there are repeat cards in this. Uh, that's how some of these uh, will stack up. Yeah, so cer certain locations can have more than one card. Yeah. And if that happens, you have to defeat all the cards at once. In, yeah, in one swoop. In you one have swoop, to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then the next one is, ah, the train pushes the DeLorean to But we were just speaking about this. Speaking of which, yeah. So um, these two are going to hang out here. So that means in order to solve this entire event, all three of these symbols must be met in one turn. Yes. Okay, so that's two. And then... Let's see. Marty buys the sports almanac. Okay, so that is going to oh, go all the way the to the blast to the past over here. So this is the thing that causes a huge problem. <laughs> that this, this sports... almanac is oh, a I can huge see. problem. I can see why. Because that would basically be a he, he gets all the information. Wait, so that... spoilers. I'm sorry. If I spoil it at this point. <sighs> what do you mean at this point? <laughs> You're allowed to watch it if you haven't seen it. It's been about twenty something years. <laughs> twenty. Okay, let's roll our dice. Thirty years. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, wow. Let's I have a lot see. of lightning. I have one lightning. Don't forget, we have the Einstein tokens there. That's uh, true. That do help us out. So So you're going first. I need to go to Hill, hmm. Hilldale. Hilldale? 2015, which is all the way over here. So that's going to be kind of tough with the... I mean, I could... We'll see. Yeah, I need to get to the clock tower, but I kind of want to try to see if I can handle this over here. You know, on my turn, I'm probably going to try to resolve this. You think have... you can? Oh, yeah, because I can use these two to move down. Okay. And then I can just move, use this to move. Oh, no, I use this to move down. Right. One of them to move over, and then I can use the punch from oh, there. Oh, nice. Okay. So with that information, do what you will. Do me. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. You do you, boo. I, I think I want to... I think I want to try to handle this before going to this clock tower over here. What do you think about that? What do you ha uh, do you have any, how many I, items? I don't think I can like fully get it, but I think I can position myself there. Sure. You can always ripple a die. I could always ripple a die. So let's see. So I don't have the zoom capability. So I think I'm going to re-roll. <laughs> th I'm going to keep the punch. So I'm going to use this die to re-roll, and I'm just going to take a chance. This is going to, if neither of us clear these out, this is going to move the out of time marker up by three. Mm. Two locations and one for the paradox token. You know what? I do have this right here, and I'm in the same location over here. Yeah. I can then punch Biff out, and then resolve that with yeah. this. You the only be... problem is we don't have we don't gain an event, but it's it is just putting it is. out fires. Okay, sounds good. And then I can use my dock to take out these two uh, paradox. Okay. All right, let's do it. Change my mind. All right. Okay, so so I'm using the flux capacitor to move right. through time. All right. So that's one. I'm gonna punch Biff out. So Biff is gonna move, I'll just move him over here to the clock tower. Okay. We don't have anything that has to be returned here, right? No, over here, okay. That's this one. Okay. And then, so that's punching him. Then I am going to use the lightning, which is what is required over here to resolve this event. So that okay. it is resolved. So normally we would take an item card here. If there was one, there's none. And then now I have my last one, which is the Doc Brown symbol. And this Doc Brown symbol allows me to take away two Paradox tokens anywhere on the board. So these two are the only two. Just get rid of those two. All right. All right. Done? That's it, yep. Okay. I'm going to use my Flux to move down to the Skyway. And then I'm going to spend one of these dice to just move over one. This requires, the Sports Almanac requires a Lightning and a Punch symbol. So I have one Lightning here, and I'm going to spend this Punch via Einstein, nice. our friend. Einstein. So this gets resolved, and I All get right. to draw an item. You do. Doc's letter. I have to return it to the clock tower in 1885. Wow, okay. it's got my DeLorean moving everywhere. So do you have one more? Uh, why don't you use that? I need that? it to go to Hilldale. So what I could do is spend this with this to do a Mr. Fusion, oh. turn it into an arrow, and Yeah, lower. I like it. Okay, so I'm spending this lightning bolt with this Einstein token which is also Lightning Bolt, to activate Mr. Fusion. We're moving all the way nice. to Hilldale, and we're returning this item. Nice. 
So that goes bye bye. You're fired. Out of time moves over to the left, and we get a new Einstein token. Nice. Oh, which is an arrow. Arrow, good. And that completes my turn. Nice, very good. So we're going to advance the out of time marker to oh, one space. One space only, yeah. Because there's only one location here that uh, has events. So we're actually doing pretty well doing in terms well, yeah. of the time marker. And that gets a paradox token. It does, yeah. So let's rotate the first player. Okay, that's you. You're going to draw the cards. And I'm going to, sure. Okay. So lightning strikes the clock tower at 10 or 10.04 p.m. So this is a clock tower 1955. So I have to eventually go there, so I'll try to handle that. Okay. We have Doc introduces the DeLorean time machine to Marty. <laughs> That's exactly where I am, Marty. In 1985 at the Twin Pines Mall. Okay, and the third one, the McFly family has <laughs> rehydrated pizza. Oh, is that good? It's from the movie. It's like super from the movie. Like, okay. It, it's like this little packet of pizza that they put into this microwave, and then it comes out looking like a perfect pizza. Oh. Yeah. That's... <laughs> That's handy. That's what they thought things were going to look like. Well, that's Hilldale in 2015. Nice. So maybe you can handle that. Since yeah, I would love to. Cool. <laughs> let's roll. All right, let's do it. So these two go out because I've spent them. Yep. All right. I got okay, a wide so variety here. I don't have the symbol. Oh, I have a tool. I have a tool. Okay. So you're so first. So I'm first. I'm going to spend this tool to resolve that one symbol up there. Okay. And that means this is done. And I get the item from 2015 which is a clock tower flyer nice. i have to return it to the clock tower in 1985 over here where biff is which is right there so i need to go to the clock tower in two different uh times, <laughs> times. i need to go here and here interesting so let's i'm gonna move to 1885 okay so you're gonna go up so i'm spending here. my flux to move all the way up here okay oh i might as well punch him you can also then use the uh, that Yeah, I'm going to do token. that for... I'm definitely going to end my turn doing that. Okay. So you're going to punch him? Yeah, I might yeah. as well punch him. I have a punch. Nice. So I'm punching Biff out of this location. Where should I put him? Uh, definitely not to the clock tower, because that's where you need to go. I'll get. put him in the blacksmith. Okay, sounds good. And so this location needs a light. Oh, it doesn't need a... doesn't need a dock, which is what you have. I'm just going to spend it then to remove that paradox. Yeah, because it'll be a waste, right? Yeah. Okay. Spending dock to remove Spending the that to move this, remove this token. And then I am going to use this Einstein token, which is the arrow, to move myself over to the clock tower. Nice. In 1885, which resolves this card. Dock letter. All right, perfect. So I move this over one, and we get another Einstein token. Ooh, that's oh, that's a tool. Those are always really good. All right, and that's my turn. Okay, very cool. Um, so this area is going to is going to get two right because there's only one event one event and two so there's going to be this we have so two. much time yeah. capacity that you can just that's what i'm thinking i'm going to forget about it because there's no um items here yeah. so i kind of want to go somewhere else so i might use the flux capacitor to move up i'll show you this right here through time to this area i'm going to use my arrow to bring me all the way over here this event to resolve it requires Doc Brown, and there's no Biff. So yeah, Naveen's kind of item does not does not get a returned because we have this. Because event. there's an event, yeah. So right once there, you resolve so. the event or get rid of Biff or both. So you spent you're spending the Doc. I'm spending the Doc right. to resolve this event, so that doesn't happen anymore. And then now we get a new item. Marty's skateboard return to Marty's house in uh, 1985. So I got to go all the way here. Not oh, too okay. far. Not too far. Oh, we have to clear out that event. I do, yeah. But <laughs> I now have. I'm at the clock tower in 1955, and there's nothing in this box over here. So I do resolve that item. Perfect. So we get a new Einstein token. We don't move the. We don't move this back because I already had zero. Oh, it's so another. Pretty well right now. Doc. So the dock token. Nice. You still have one more? I do have one more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use it just to move myself over one so that hopefully I can get a flux capacitor and then handle this. All right. Cool. So we are going to advance the out of time marker by two spaces this time. Because yep. there are two locations here. So it's going to go up two. Okay. And now these will get... Paradox that is a problem. If we can't just it's leave that. A little I'm going to show up here. I'm going to try to handle this on the next turn. So. All right. Here you go. We shall see. That's for you, and now you can draw three new three events. Cards. Okay, Doc saves Marty at the clock tower. Oh, perfect, you're already here. I am there. Nice, and there's no Biff? That is perfect. One. Okay. I'm, I'm going, going to, to clean, clean up, up this, this town. town. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, it says immediately remove all events at one location. You do not gain an item for this. You want to see this one? Do you agree here? Yes, yeah, all totally. Right. Remove that. Right, Cleaning so up that town right over there. 
And I think that was three. That was so three. So let's roll. Rocking and a roll. And oh, this has been used. So let's yeah. go up. Okay. So I have a wrench, two wrenches, a flux, and an arrow. Uh, a wrench, two fists, and a uh, lightning bolt. This is actually great. I need to go. Oh, we don't have a. Is there any way you can just resolve this so you can take a new item? Yeah, I can. I can use a wrench. Let's do that now. I'm going to use a wrench as a... Well, I'm first, I think, so... Oh, you are first. I <laughs> just want to make sure. Yeah, I'll be able to take this out, and okay. I'm going to try to get to the clock tower. Go Very ahead. cool. Okay, so I don't have... I need to get here to drop this off at Marty's house. So I don't have a flux capacitor, but I have two punches. So I'm going to use the two punches to get me through. And then I have the lightning, and then a tool is going to represent this the over arrow. here, the arrow. So I'm going to use those two to resolve this. So that goes out. This goes out. You don't draw a new one. I don't draw event. a new one because there's nothing there. But Marty's skateboard is safely back at Marty's house in the oh, right good. here. So that's good. So that goes out. This moves down one, and we get a new Einstein. Oh. Oh, that's good. All right, that's my turn. Oh, you use all your dice? That's it. Yeah, all I'm right. back. Yep. So now I will do the thing. I'm going to spend this wrench in order to fulfill that one event. So this goes, and now I get an item from here. Case of Plutonium. Oh, I have nice. to return it to Doc's lab there in 1985. All the way over here. All the way over here. So Both I'm, are in 85, huh? Yeah. Okay. So I'm making my way. Yeah, you should get to 1885. With my flux, I'm moving to 1985. So that's a clock tower, which I need to return this to, but I need to punch him. Well, you can just move to Doc's lab first and just handle that. Fine. Mm. Because so. you can't punch, right? Oh, well, which way? Can you use two docks as the same to represent a punch? I imagine so. I think so, right? Two of the same symbol. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use two of these Einstein tokens that are showing the same same symbol. They're going to represent a punch. They're going to represent Mr. Fusion. Yes. And so they're punching, or I'm punching uh, Biff. <laughs> I'm going to put him in the Hill Valley High, High School. school yeah. Now I have the clock tower freed up. So here is my item. Mm. Excellent. We move the out-of-time marker to the left, and we have a new Einstein token. Oh, it's an arrow. Well, I have an arrow right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend it to move to Doc's lab and Boom. fulfill my second item. Killing it. And here we go with another Einstein token. Nice. Okay. Now, where are where do we have items still? We have one down here yeah. and one up here and one here. So unfortunately, so... there are no events. <laughs> yeah. Do I leave? Should I ripple this? You can always pick it back up. You can just leave it behind. I'm, I'm not going to leave it. I feel like it's not useful. Fine. Fine. I'm going to leave it. You can Because you can always pick it up, and you're the first player to go anyway. That's so. true. Because I'm rippling this die, I can choose to pick it up off the board if I don't actually want to leave it there before mm -hmm. we roll our dice. Right. So it's after the events show up, before we roll our dice. Gotcha. Okay, uh, so that's the end of the round. That's the end of the round. So, so those Einstein tokens go away because we've used them. Yep. And we are going to advance the out-of-time marker. We're actually going to go up uh, two spaces because this is the only area that has an event, but there's also a paradox token. Right. Okay. So two spaces, and we don't add another one. So your first player. Thank you. Okay, so we need to see some events happening where there's items. We don't want to see any 85 events. 1985. 2015. Okay. Perfect. Right. Griff tries to recruit Marty Jr. So Griff is Biff's. Uh, In the cafe 80s. Grandson. <laughs> Doc falls in love with Clara okay, in the schoolhouse of 1885, which is perfect. We just need a blue one now. Yeah, we do. Nope. Doc builds the DeLorean in Doc's lab 1985. Oh, right where you are. It is, but... Oh, and it needs a wrench. <laughs> uh, That's why you left it there. That's I'm cool. going to pick it up, actually. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be useful. Yeah. So let's roll. I'm going to try to get to, eight, to 2015 if I can. I can. Oh, I have a lot of rerolls here. Okay, that's good. We have I have three lightning bolts and a Mr. Doc person. So let me try to handle this one over here. I can handle this. Oh, uh, there's a Biff symbol here. Oh, so that's so gonna Biff go right over there. goes over there. Yep. So you'll be able to do that? Well, now that, that there's a Biff symbol, maybe. Yeah, I can. I can use uh, some of those Einstein tokens. You don't even have to because you can move down. Punch him and then use the wrench. To oh, that's right. That, that's that right. Card. Totally. Okay. So Good that call. means where am I going to go? Useless here. Can you get to uh, 1885? I, yes, yeah, you actually. Totally I'm going to spend two of these lightning oh, bolts perfect. to flex over. I'm going to spend uh, this dock symbol to move over one space nice. and then spend the lightning bolt to fulfill this event. Perfect. And now I take the last item, power laces. Oh, nice. Which is going to the skyway. Yep. 
in 2015. So those, those are cool shoes. Those are cool shoes that Marty wears. Awesome. They they look like more like shoes from the 90s. Well, although it's supposed to be from you know, 2015. Like, they still take. You, you know how like things in the future from like things in the past are gonna look kind of like the same but futuristic of what's of it's the true, current times because we don't really have a an, true a true idea beyond our current scope. Right. So they take like the <laughs> art and style and everything of like the 80s and then they try to say okay what does it look like 30 yeah. years from now yeah makes sense yeah cool all right so uh, my turn so i'm gonna do all the things that we said so i'm gonna use this okay to move on down i'm gonna punch biff out of here and where do you need him not to be this guy he needs to not be here okay so i'll just put him over here okay. in hilldale uh then i will use the tool to represent the punch that we have over here so this is done and then now i take the last item of 2015 Okay, so this is the stove door that needs to be at the saloon, which is all the way up here. Now, the good thing is Einstein has a uh, flux capacitor. I can use it and just go and drop it off right now. Shall you I? You want to? I mean, might as well, right? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to use this Einstein token, which is a flux capacitor, to move myself through time over here, dropping off the stove door, which Marty uses as a bulletproof vest. Okay. Okay. So move that over. Yeah, perfect. And we get... Another another one. Einstein okay, and I still have another, uh, I have another die, which I'm just going to leave it behind right here, just in case I need it. Okay. Okay. I should have done that, by the way. What? Use that flux capacitor to move through the skyway, because that's what I have here. Well, but only one fine. of us could use it. Well, oh, I see. Yeah, it's yeah. not my turn anymore. So. It's not your turn anymore, yeah. Oh, well. So, we are going to increase the time by three. Yes. Because it's two locations plus the token. So okay. one, two, three. Wow. Okay. That escalated semi quickly. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to that. Yeah, so that's going to be a big problem if we don't. It's going to be a little problem. It'll be so a problem. Well, we can always to. use a Doc Brown symbol if we have one, which it's we true. don't have. <laughs> okay, so. Events. Events, yes. So this one Doc builds the DeLorean. Wow, over here. No Biff symbol. Okay. One. Uh, Biff steals the DeLorean, so that's at the Skyway over here. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a problem for you. And Biff goes there. So not as easy, huh? No. Right. One, two. I should have gone. I know. Last turn. And then Griff tries to recruit Marty Jr. That's going to go right over here. I wish I had a Biff symbol. I do, too. Gosh, we need an event to show up in the blue area. Badly. For that item. All right. We're just going to be putting so out fires. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So I will take my die back. Okay, okay, two wow. punches and two lightning bolts. So I got three lightning bolts and a forward arrow. This goes out. So you're first? Yeah. Uh, boy, should I just try to come here and put out some fires? That out of time marker is going to move up two spaces this round. Two spaces? Yeah. It's going to move up four, four spaces. if we don't remove these. So you should probably try use to get there. a dock symbol of sorts to remove I, them i don't have a dock symbol but i do have two lightning bolts that can yep. represent a dock mr fusion all right let's do it so i'm using it to represent a dock brown symbol taking off two paradox tokens from the board this is one two okay and then now i'm just kind of just kind of hanging out here so why don't you i'm going to use this to reroll this and have a one in six shot of getting, getting a flux. flux okay so i can be here for when this event happens right oh that was a firework yeah <laughs> so I'm going to use this to spend any die, and I just re-rolled right myself into this same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to hang out, I think. I don't think I'll use this. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll ripple it. There we go. Okay. So now I am going to spend these two lightning bolts as a Mr. Fusion to move all the way down here. I'm going to punch Biff. I punched him. Okay. Where? Anywhere? Yeah, there. that's good. And then I have to complete this card with a lightning bolt, which I don't have. So I'm going to spend this wrench from Einstein to complete it. And nice. it's not really going to get me anything other than the ability to drop that off. Drop this off. The power nice. laces are now at the Skyway. Perfect. We go down a time and we gain an Einstein token. Come on, something good. It's a lightning, right, lightning bolt. Simple. So I have this punch. Mm -hmm. Do I, I'm going to ripple it. I will see what happens. Sounds good. All right. So now we are going to increase the time by two because of these two locations. Mm -hmm. And they're each going to get a Paradox token. Okay. 
We need some um, blue events coming out let's here. Let's get spent. Yeah, we need a blue event. We need it badly. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. We're, we're putting out fires until then, basically. Uh, 1885. Doc saves Barty. At the oh, at the Doc Tower. There we here go. Here we go. Oh, nice. The skateboard chase oh, in Courthouse Square. Okay, there's a Biff symbol here, though. Of course. Very famous scene. And then Marty buys the sports almanac. Blast from the past. Okay. Okay, let's roll these dice. I'm going to take this back. Uh, I'm going to take mine back just so I have more chance to get here. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Oh, okay. This is the last item, by the way. Wow. Two punches, a wrench, and a, a dock. Same. Exact same Oh, roll. really? Yeah. Okay. So this is our very last item that we need to pick up and deliver. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to do that, then we'll win the game. So where am I? I'm over here. I can do it. Can I you? can do it. You can travel through time? No. Do you want to... Should I spend this to reroll all my dice? You need a punch at least to get to this guy. Yeah. So should I Save spend it to reroll all of these dice except for the punch? Well, the tool is needed to solve this. <laughs> so now it's <laughs> Well, getting... there's always this tool. Oh, there is always that tool. You're right. Yes. Yes, reroll yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to spend this Einstein. Keep, keeping the punch. Yeah, I'm keeping the punch. Okay. Um, another punch. And lightning and an arrow. You can use these two to represent a wild to get you here. Then use your arrow to get across. Yeah, punch that's true. Biff, punch him and, and then, then use tool the him. tool. Okay, let's do it. And then I'll just hang out. Yeah, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll maybe try to put out a fire. Yeah, put these out. Because it's going to increase my Well, power. I have a dock, so I'm going to use a dock to, to take away those two at least. Okay, yeah. so that plan, <laughs> what was that plan again? Okay, so you're going to use your, these two arrows here. Oh, yeah. So I'm spending these two to move through time. We're going to flex to Boom. Peabody. I'm going to spend this arrow, this real arrow, to now move to Lou's Cafe. Where Biff is. I'm punching Biff, Out. punching you into the Brown Mansion. Okay. And I'm going to spend this wrench. We've used all of our Einstein times. Nice, yeah. To resolve this event. Perfect. So, so. now the last item. The Marty's guitar. Nice. I have to return it to Hill Valley High School in 1985. Right where Biff, where we punched Biff here, I think. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay, well, I still have these How two. How could you know? You can move over one just to position, position yourself and leave yourself a punch so that you can punch him when you come back. I'm going to spend this just to re-roll this. Oh, just okay. Cause. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spend that to move over one. All right, sounds good. So if you could punch him out of there, that would be great. Well... I can leave you a punch. <laughs> I can go here and just drop off a punch for you to yeah. start your turn. Can you do that? Well, that would be great. Okay, we're definitely going to be using uh, the dock to take those two dock, uh, paradise, paradise, <laughs> paradox tokens. We're going to paradise. We're going to paradise, knocking those out. All right, so do you want me to leave you a, leave you a punch here? Yes. And then, oh, but I'm going to be first player, huh? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't You're matter. the one that has to re return it, so... Okay. And fortunately, there's no sharing of items. Right. So I guess that makes sense because we can't be in the same place at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Thematically. Okay. So I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna spend my uh, my this one. <laughs> I'll <laughs> my, leave this, this uh, punch for you. Okay. And then I can. I'll leave you another punch just in case something goes wrong. You're leaving me two. Yeah, just in case like another event shows up there or something. All right. I might as well, right? I'm okay with that. Are you done with your turn? You know, I'm actually gonna leave you a tool and use the punch to move over just in case if we draw a card and it shows up here not only do you have to punch biff but then you have to resolve the event ah, so i'm going to leave that for you smart yeah. great that's good okay we're going to advance the out of time marker by two okay. one two because of these the and these two are getting some paradox tokens yes so we are this is the highest the out of time marker has been all game we which... can't really afford to not win on this round because this will <laughs> go up four to eleven and then it's you know we're pretty close at that point that's right but I'm All right, so good. this moves good. to you okay. and draw your three events. This yes. is potentially is probably the last round. Hoverboard chase, the clock tower over here. Okay. Sorry, Biff. All right, here we go. Out of gas, arrow icons only move you one space this round. So you know Ooh. how the arrow can send you side by side? Yes. This only allows you one time. So I'll keep it in play over here. Okay. And over here, we have Enchantment Under the Sea Dance. It's over here, right where you are. The Hill Valley High School, Hill Valley 1955. High School. Yeah. Johnny, be good. Okay, let's roll these up. Okay, so I'm going to leave these two here for you. Thank you. All right. Punch and tool. <laughs> I've got a flux arrow, lightning flux. So, so good thing I have that punch for you. Yeah, I'm going to be able to do this. 
on my turn. That's so funny. I'm leaving you a punch, you know, a hundred years into the- I found a punch! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was digging. I don't know. and I, I don't know where this thing punched me. Are you going to take a turn? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to say, Monique, you got this. You're foregoing your actions? I don't see if there's any actions I can take. And I'm definitely not going to meet you over here, so... Okay. Go ahead, Monique. So Show then us the way. I am going to... Travel through time. Yeah. I'm going to use this flux. Oh, these all these should have been spent oh, this yeah. round. There you go. I'm using that flux to move to 1985. Nice. Using your punch that you rippled for me so <laughs> kindly to move Biff out of there. And here we go. Nice. Hill Valley High School has received <laughs> Marty's guitar. That's right. And the game is done. That's it. Wow. That was, wow. Somebody must know that we won. They're celebrating. They're celebrating. They're celebrating <laughs> the, the return of all these items. The space-time continuum has been preserved. Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, we just finished our playthrough of Back to the Future Dice Through Time. I had a good time. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. that's fun. This is a very, very light, it is uh, very light cooperative yes. game. So this is a family weight uh, game in the IP of Back to the Future. Yeah. So people who want to get a cooperative game in with maybe people who don't play games or their kids or just people who love this theme are really going to enjoy this, I think. Yeah, I think games like this where they take a very, very famous IP um, is really, really good for the hobby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it, dra it draws people in. I think this has been said by a lot of people that it draws people in who might not have otherwise been thinking about playing a board game. Yeah. But they like the theme. So then that draws them into the game. And then they like to understand these mechanics. They like the way right. their brain works. That is the literal definition, yeah. I believe, of gateway. Gateway right? game, yeah. So this, is, this can definitely be totally. uh, considered as a you know great gateway cooperative game. Totally. Pick up With, and deliver. Yep. And like, I think. Uh, other games like Pandemic mm. and are still considered to be like gateway cooperative games, but this has less stress. This is this does not have a ramp up mechanism yes. that those games do right. have, which we'll talk about in a second. Sure. But uh, theme wise, so I haven't seen them all, and I think I might have seen like the first one <laughs> with you. Yeah, I think and I made her watch it. Yeah. I loved it. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just that I don't really relate to the rest of it. So for me. I think that the theme is cool, but it, I didn't like relish in it as much as Naveen did. Like, yeah. When we opened this, Naveen was like, oh my gosh, like. Yeah, it's really cool. Like the, everything. The, the artwork <laughs> is really, really cool. Sorry, like, and I quote yeah. Naveen, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The artwork is really cool. I like the way that um, they, it's it's weird. Like it's very similar to what was in the movies, but in, done in almost a very cartoonish way. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you can really see what they were going for with it. And they really did their homework when they when they did this one. Yeah, it's the really, artwork really is good. great. Yeah. Like even from somebody who doesn't, who's not familiar with every aspect of it, the artwork, the components, like the paradox tiles, like the, the different Einstein chits, mm -hmm. the dice, are, it's all very charming, yep. you know? So I imagine that anybody who just loves Back to the Future is probably going to really enjoy this game, even just for the nostalgia. It, I was just about to say, like, when you flip over these cards, and maybe you haven't seen this movie in 10 years, 15 years, and you're like, oh, man, where Doc saves Marty at the clock tower when he's being choked and hung. Like, that's really, really he cool. He did that. Yeah. When he first opened the game and, like, looked through all the cards, that's yeah. literally what he was doing. Yeah. So um, definitely great for people who love the IP. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of player count, this plays up to four. It plays up to four, two yeah. Two to four, okay. So two players seems kind of easy. Easier uh, in because we have three item cards coming out. Um, yeah, and but... there are less uh, DeLoreans on the board. Yes, so that's the thing. So the risk of, of running into each other is obviously way less, and right. the um, punishment for running in into each other is quite high. Especially, you know, with this game, it's you have to do well kind of in the beginning. Like if you're putting out fires really well in the beginning, then chances are you're probably going to do well in the game. Right. But if you start like the first two rounds and your time marker is like kind of all the way over here, which yeah. actually happened to us the first yeah, the time we first played, because yeah. we didn't really like grasp the concepts yeah. yet, then you're probably going to be in trouble. Right. And so that's really important in terms of not meeting up in the same location, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what in a four thoughts? player game, it, there's just more DeLoreans going out. Everyone has their own items. They need to get to certain places. Uh, people are rippling more dice, so... And there are more events. There's more events, so, so it's it's likely that you're going to have that paradox where you guys meet. I would say four is probably the sweet spot for this. Four is probably the sweet spot. I yeah. think it would be kind of... Uh, what you could do as even a two-player is you just take control of two DeLoreans. Yeah, you could do that. That is and, not a problem at all. And so, we, and we, we like doing that, And we like doing that, actually, a lot with the 
with the co-op games. So you can also choose between the different modes of play. I believe there are four of them. Right. It's like beginning, standard, which is the one that we played, and then there's like two harder modes. Right. But it really just adds more items. So mm -hmm. it doesn't make the game harder, it makes the game longer. Longer, yeah. Which exactly. I guess having a game be having this game specifically be longer does make it riskier because it's a lot more trying to keep yourself afloat yeah. in terms of that out of time marker. Right, right. So but that is basically what it is. Yeah. So you mentioned something about a ramp up mechanism. Um, did you want yeah, to so, touch on that? So I guess going into the mechanics of this game, you know, other co-ops, they have a ramp up mechanism. So like in, in pandemic there's that epidemics yeah. the epidemic cards and then the harder the game mode that you're playing, the more of those you put in. Right. And this game doesn't have that. It's pretty much just the whole way through. And if you haven't played Pandemic, what I mean by ramp up mechanism is like usually halfway or maybe like two thirds of the way through the game when you're getting closer to winning, or even just as time goes on, there's some kind of element that makes the mechanics more intense, more severe. puts more pressure on you. Right, right. Whether it be maybe like once we've completed two stacks of these item cards, now we put out five events right, instead per, of three. per right. round instead of three. Right. Something like that, that makes it, makes uh, losing a little bit easier yeah. to do, right? A little bit faster. Towards the second half of the game. Towards the second half of the game, right, exactly. Right. So this doesn't have that, which is great for people who are looking for like a lighter experience in a cooperative game. But I think that the cool part of this game is that rippling dice mechanism. Yeah, we leave a dice behind. And yeah, yeah, that's like not something that we've really seen before. And it's cool that that's kind of incorporated in this because there's a, it adds a lot more to the play interaction. Yeah, and it's thematic from the movies also. Yeah. So going back to theme in, in this game, it's uh, in the movies, Doc leaves the DeLorean in the 1800s and he lets Marty find it all the way into the future mm -hmm. so he can get the machine to go back in time to help him out. It's right. really, really cool. So that is a really yeah. cool mechanic. And it's, it, it is fun to try to strategize which die to leave where, you know, mm -hmm. who's going to use it, do I take it back? Like, that is a really cool part of the it game. It is cool. Yep. So all in all? All in all, I, I love the IP. Um, so this is one of two Back to the Future games that are coming out uh, this year or that have come out this year. So we haven't tried the other one, mm -hmm. but I really enjoyed this one. You? Yeah, I had, a, I had a good time. Like, this is the first cooperative game that we played in a long time where the pressure wasn't just on, right? Mm. So this is, and it has a kind of like an addicting gameplay to it because the pick up and deliver system is fun. Yeah. So I think it's it's great for, especially for what it is and for the kind of gamers that it's targeting. I'm really looking forward to playing this one with my brother and my dad. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Like we already know people in our yes. lives who are really gonna wanna play this game. Totally, yeah. So I think that it's, it's a fantastic way to definitely like bring more people into the hobby. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the playthrough. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you like to see videos like this and like to see more, please consider subscribing. Bye. Thanks.